I had a conversation with a gay friend last night who, and it was all about this topic, the topic of identity, that the, the worst lie that's been peddled, I think really on, on the entire country, and uh, in particular, it's been peddled on young people, and it's been peddled on gay men in particular, uh, is that your sexuality is the, the central defining aspect 100%. of your identity. Yep. Uh, and I, partially because I'm a Protestant and a contrarian, and those two things probably go hand in hand, Identity is like one of the most important topics to me. And I think that a person is, is, uh, should craft their identity. I think that the most American thing that one can do is, to, is not to say, I'll pick on you, Michael, just for a minute. You're, you're obviously very proudly an Italian and American and you eat meatballs. And yeah. one time, yeah. one time yeah. I, I that's remember an actual- Kill and, people. And yeah, yeah. I, that's right. <laughs> piano, piano wire. I actually remember there was a whole- year where Michael would, for breakfast, bring a pizza pie mm-hmm. to the Daily Wire. <laughs> extra would, large. Extra, extra large. large would eat the, yeah. He was trying to get in shape for a movie that Drew and I were never going to cast him in. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I gained 20 pounds of muscle. You did? Yeah. I did. And then well, I stopped, you gained 20 pounds yeah. of American I gained, No, I, then I, I realized there's, there's one thing you're supposed to do. They say you gain all the, all the muscle, and then you're supposed to cut. I didn't cut. Uh, I no. never did the cut. <laughs> no. But I think that saying I'm an Italian-American can be taken to a bad place. Yeah. And that one of the things that's great about America is that we get to sort of look at the world and choose the best parts and kind of and, and build the individual out of those best parts. You're, you're not just an Italian-American. I mean, the queen died this week. Yeah. I was moved by it. I'm, I'm, as far as I know, not British. My ancestry isn't British, but I can look at uh, the role that Britain has played in world history. I can look at the, at the work of uh, Queen Elizabeth over the 70 years of her reign and see something that I want to emulate, see values that I think are good. And I want to I want to appropriate, which I think is a very good term, I want to appropriate the best things from around the world and build sort of a uniquely American identity or a uniquely Jeremy identity. That doesn't mean throwing out the past. It just means that we get to be selective about the past. We, I say all the time, I want to take the very best ideas of the past and build a future on top of those. I want to dismiss the very worst ideas of the past and not include those in the future that I think that we can all build together. But what we've said to young people and gay men in America is all you are. You're not the best ideas of the past. You're not the best ideas of your heart. You're not, you're not the best ideas you've had. You're not you a are, pianist or a cellist or a that's woodworker right. or no. That's right. You are only this thing. Well, that's a Freudian. And right? I mean, it's, it's it, take off on Freud. It, it grows from Freud, but it also eliminates the entire creative tension that America has exemplified between identity and role. You know, the mm-hmm. idea that, yes, I want to do this, but it might be wrong. It might be bad for my spirit. Yes, I come from this, these descendants, but I want to go in a new way. And that creates a tension. All our movies are about this Get Out and The Godfather, about, you know, I, I want to be an American, but something else is pulling me. And that is an incredibly creative way to live because it is, it exemplifies the spiritual life. The spiritual yep. life is that I'm in this body that wants certain things, but not all of the things it wants are good for me. And you so know, we're in this, this, is one way, this wonderful you know, tension. Speaking of sort of Hollywood and, and, the, and all of this, you can see the evolution in movies of how narrative has changed in America. Right? All the movies used to be about how I'm driven to do this thing that, that would be my bliss, but I have this role and I have this duty, and so I have to actually do this role in this duty, and it's really important that I fulfill this role in this duty. And now every movie is precisely the opposite. Society is calling on me to do this thing, but I'm going to break free and be me, and being me is the most important thing that there can possibly be. You see it in the, in, in the Disney universe. To, we'll get to, I'm sure, Matt's, uh, Matt's Disney comments uh, in just a second. But the Disney universe went from Jiminy Cricket saying, always let your conscience be your guide, <laughs> right. to Ilsa singing, no right, no wrong, no rules, I'm free, right? I mean, like the, the idea in, in Disney movies has explicitly moved away from the idea of you're supposed to have a role within a certain confine to find your bliss, be yourself, and being yourself is the greatest hero you can yeah, be. I, 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 do, I do think that Americans can be uniquely individuals, that you can be yourself. It's who, your, who your true self is isn't utterly unmoored from reality. I like the term classical liberalism as a descriptor for my views, Classical is a major part of the term, right? It's not. It's not freedom. Uh, having it's not throw away the past and you will be free. But it's within the best ideas of the past there is a freedom. Well, in the what? religious worldview, the idea is that you are a biological being yes. and you have to reach beyond yourself to values that are far beyond you, and you have to fulfill roles in order to reach those values. Right? I mean, this, there, there's an interplay between you and civilization. The process of raising a child is taking what is essentially a piece of raw biological material and turning that into a civilized human being. This was the process of, of actually civilizing people. And we've decided civilization is bad. It's an imposition on people. Yep. And because civilization yes. is an imposition on people, civilization itself 
must be wrecked and it must be ruined. I, by the way, I think that you see a lot of this in the in the rage at the British Empire and the rage at, at yep. Queen Elizabeth yeah. II. The idea is that that, that that great clip of Don Lemon today. The Don Lemon oh, clip. It's a spectacular clip. Yeah. But the, you know, this is why I think we, we actually keep failing on the transgender stuff. Is, be, is because we're not taking this conversation to heart yep. as conservatives. Because w- what we keep doing is falling into the same sort of liberal trap of, of reducing everything to, to chromosomes, you know, to biology inst- and, and who we are and identity and rights instead of what, what we're all talking about right now, which is duty and obligation. This, That's what Edmund Burke talked about. This is the way, this it, is the way I, I already regret that I'm going to say this, but this is the way in which Knowles is right about <laughs> The, uh, both the Reformation and the Enlightenment. The solution to the violence that grew out of the uh, religious division that came with the Reformation was basically to say to each his own, uh, we're not going to solve this problem. We're going to separate. Do it, do it. Say it. Say it. Say it. What? Say Peace of Westphalia. Say the Peace it. of Westphalia. Yes! Oh! yes! <laughs> That's, a That's, That's a record. That's a record. 27 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, a record. Well, I also, I also think... But, it's, but, but let me just, just finish the, the idea that the more conflicts you, resol- you take away... Theoretically, the more peace there'll be, right? So if there's no ar- moral arguments to be had, we won't get into moral arguments. And of course, it works like everything on the left. It works exactly the opposite. But if you remove all this tension, you remove all the source of creativity in life, all the all the fights between the many and the few, all the fights between freedom and equality, all those things that have been the creative engine of our lives uh, are taken away. And you're left with nothing but this kind of flat deadness of desire where you want and you get and then you, you feel bad, but you can't say so. Yep. I agree with with all of this, but I also I also sort of feel that if you ask someone what's your identity or how do you identify or where do you find your identity, I think maybe the healthiest answer to get from someone is sort of a, I don't know what do you, why are you asking me that because another problem is that we spend we spend so much time I, I think this was a a change in Western cultures we spent all this time sort of like peering back within ourselves yes. and and constantly thinking well who am I and why am I here and what. What is, uh, well, not even why I'm here, just who am I and how do I feel and where do I find my identity? And it's just this constant peering back within yourself. You kind of get lost, sort of like sucked into yourself like a black hole and just yeah. everything gets sucked along with you. I think, I think the, the, the most, if you, if you go to cultures where they don't, they don't have this hang up and you ask them these questions, yeah, they find their identity and duties and responsibilities and all of that is true. But if you ask them, where do you find your identity? They, they'll just look at you like, what kind of question is that? The only thing it, they might they, say they they inhabit, they, Right, they inhabit their identity so so clearly that they don't even think about it, and so that's one of the that's one of the problems. Is even by having this conversation, it's sort of like we're we're making identity complicated. Hey, like what you saw? Of course you did. You wouldn't have stayed until the very end if you didn't. Now you can do your part and tap that like button for me. It's sort of like petting the algorithm. You wouldn't not pet a dog, would you? Don't be a dog hater. Press the button.